Hi everyone, and welcome to Sid Meier's Colonization. So, as some of you might know, I've been planning to do some of the older strategy games for a pretty long time now. I have like a whole list of a dozen or two dozen old strategy games that I would like to do. And I've already done some of them in the past, like Sid Meier's Pirates or Master of Magic, but there are a heck of a lot more that I would like to do. And I figured this is as good as time as any. And here's one of them, Colonization. This is obviously not like the original version of Colonization, this is the Civ 4 version. But I played this quite a bit back in the day. I played pretty much every version of Civilization back in the day. And Colonization plays quite differently compared to traditional Civilization games. And I figured we can do it for all time's sake. So let's jump into it, shall we? I played a little bit, like maybe 20 minutes, just to remember some of the most basic game mechanics, but there are probably a lot of things I do not quite remember. As for the leader, we are actually going to play as the Dutch for the charismatic perk here. Plus 100% time between tax increases. And the taxes get brutal as you play the game. Now, there are two maps that you can use. There's a semi-randomized Caribbean map with a lot of islands, and there's the standard New World map. Let's go with the standard New World map. The Caribbean map leads to, like, too many really small islands sometimes, so we'll go with the New World map. Now, I don't really care about the difficulty. I'm just doing this for all time's sake, for nostalgia. <laughs> I'm a sucker for nostalgia, so there are a lot of old strategy games I really enjoy that I played quite a lot back in the day. So, normal speed is fine. Let's go with Conquistador difficulty. So, the standard one, I guess, in the middle. And the standard world size. All right then, I'm quite looking forward to this. So, like I already said, colonization plays nothing like the traditional civilization games. The goal of the game is different. Your ultimate goal is to start a revolution and win a colonial war against the expeditionary force. And here's the royal expeditionary force. It will get bigger over time. And you start the game with one ship and two units, two colonists. We got one soldier, right here, and one Pioneer. So the Pioneer can improve terrain and the Soldier can obviously fight. And first our goal is to establish our first town. So you will run into natives, like right here, and initially they won't mind if you settle right next to them. However, later on they will get angry if you do that, or you will have to pay. So you can either buy the land, you can not settle near them, or you can anger them and go to war with them. These are basically the three options you'll have. But initially they won't care. And we don't want to explore for too long, because starting new towns isn't actually very hard. All you need is one single colonist, and one colonist can do it. We definitely want the town to be coastal. They don't have to be coastal, there's a way to move goods between a non-coastal town and a coastal town. But having coastal ones makes your life heck of a lot easier. Okay, more natives. I don't want to settle directly next to them. And also, another thing that makes colonization different is the workable radius around your cities, or rather towns. You can only work the tiles directly adjacent to your town. So that's something to keep in mind. If I settle two tiles away from this tobacco, for example, I will not be able to work it. I need to settle directly next to it. And here we got some ancient ruins. Let's check that out, shall we? What did we get? Experience. Sure, why not? And this is actually a decent spot. We could settle right here on the forest grassland. And we'll have cotton as well as fish. I like that. Let's do exactly that. Okay, now hold on. That will be right next to the natives. But we can settle where our soldier is currently. And normally they would be a little bit upset, but since this is our first town, they won't mind. And we can use any colonist to start a settlement, it doesn't matter. Here. Yep, since you are a small band of nomads, we welcome you to partake of the land around you. 
but that's just because this is our first town. And that's going to be New Amsterdam. So here is our actual settlement. This is also quite a bit different compared to traditional civilization games. So each colonist you have has a specialization, except the guys without specialization, like this one. And you can use any colonist to do any job. However, if he is specialized in that job, his work output will be way higher. It's not just a small difference, it's a massive difference. So for example, if I get an expert fisherman, he will get way more fish from this style than this guy. And there are all kinds of specializations. So this is a very, very important part of the game. Now there's quite a lot going on around here. We got buildings, which can also generate resources. We got liberty bells, which are used to get members of the Colonial Congress, which provide you with bonuses. But we are not growing our Colonial Congress just yet. Then we have actual production. This is where we get actual production for the building we are currently constructing in our colony. And this does require lumber, so we need to do that. And if I had an expert lumberjack, I would get heck of a lot more than six. This is a super important part of the game. But for now we want to grow our colony. There are two ways to get new colonists. You can either actually grow your town, like in traditional sieve games, but you will also get people from Europe. You will get people migrating from Europe, basically. So you can send your ship, grab some colonists waiting in Europe, and go back to your colonies with them. Which we will be doing a lot. And you will be going back to Europe a lot to sell goods. So these are all things we can load onto our ship, bring them back to Europe and sell them for a profit. And that is also a pretty damn big part of the game. Now, we need to decide what we are going to build. We will start from a dock, because the dock will give us more fish. More food from water tiles, basically. And then we will be able to build a dry dock, which we need in order to construct ships. And we will need more than one ship. And since we got some experience from that ruin, we can get a promotion. So let's see. We can get plus 10% strength. We can get some bonus to forest attack and forest defense. Heals, attack and defense, march and jungle, settlement, defense. Let's just go for settlement, defense. That's fine. And then another promotion. Yep, more settlement, defense. Here. Now, I won't actually be using this guy to just sit here and defend because we don't need to do that right now. I will just make him join the settlement. However, we can use him in the future as a soldier. And we can see that he has these two promotions. So you can turn him into a soldier anytime you want, you just need 50 guns. And we have 50 guns because he had 50 guns on him. That was like part of the actual unit. And when we made him join the colony as a free colonist, we left 50 guns in our warehouse. So when I want to go back, turn him into a soldier again, this will use the 50 guns. So that's basically how it works. Okay, what are we going to use him for? Let's get some more food, because we are going to need that. Yep, there will be time to get other resources, but for now we need to grow our colony a little bit. Okay then, let's take a look around, and we found a neighbor already, Spanish colonies, and he's already annoyed apparently. Okay, fine, there's not a whole lot I can do right now. So we will not be doing anything right now. Alright then. And we probably want to start as many colonies as possible quickly. It's very easy to start a colony. You don't need to like recruit a settler like in normal civ games. You just need any colonist and he can start a colony. It will not be a super useful colony with just one guy. But you can do it. However, you need to watch where the natives are. We probably do not want to go to war with the natives, using one soldier. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can if you want to. And we met the French. Alright then. Also, the actual tile your town is on will automatically gather the resources from that tile. All of them. Because you can only gather one resource from the tile at a time. But that doesn't apply to the town square. 
So this tile, for example, has up to four different resources I can get from it, but I can only get one at a time. So that's that. I could actually bring some ore back to Europe, however, we will need ore to make tools. And the tools are pretty important. In fact, instead of gathering this food, let's turn this guy into a pioneer. Because then he will be able to improve the tiles around us. Which is not free and it takes time, but we definitely want to do that. What do you want? World map. Yeah, okay. I can't imagine he has much of a map right now. Okay, he is over here. Not too far away. So now we can build a farm. That will take 10 turns and it will cost us 20 gold. So it does actually cost you gold. Which is fine, we'll do it. That will increase our food output and the cotton output on this tile. And we will certainly use that tile in the future for cotton. And we'll go back to Europe. There should be at least one person waiting in there. And if not, there will be one soon. Here, Master Weaver is waiting in Europe. Alright then. That will not be super useful for us right now, but it will be useful eventually. Like I said, specializations are super important in this game. They increase your work output dramatically. I can also pay to hurry the next one. So I could pay 110 gold to get an expert fisherman. Except I do not currently have 110 gold. But I could do it on my next trip. It's certainly a possibility. You can also speed up migration by producing crosses. We can't currently do it because we do not have the building for that. But... Oh yeah, I didn't actually send the ship back to our colonies. But yeah, we cannot currently generate crosses. But we'll probably want to build the relevant building relatively early. Because that's a very good source of new colonists. You can also train colonies without a specialization in a schoolhouse and then like a university. We don't actually have one yet, we'll have to build one. But this guy, for example, who does not have a specialization, you can give him a specialization by training him at a schoolhouse. Which takes a little bit of time and you will get a choice between a free specialization and the one you can pay for. So there will usually be like several to choose from. Some of them will be free and other ones will be paid. Anyway, I could actually use this Master Weaver guy to start another colony elsewhere. Not too close to the natives. Let's see. We also do not have to start coastal colonies. There is a way to move goods. But we want coastal colonies initially. Now, if I settle too close to the natives, they will ask me to pay. I can actually show you how that works. So let's just disembark, like, right here. We don't want too much overlap, but let's just disembark right here. And I'm pretty sure they will be upset if I try to settle over there. Yes, we are improving our land, thank you very much. Yep, as you can see. So, he wants us to pay 356 gold. We can do it anyway, which will anger them. Or we can just give it up and not do it at all. At least not yet. So we will not be doing it just yet, that's fine. I'm actually going to send that guy to New Amsterdam for now. Join the colony on the next turn. Because we don't need more people in here. At least for now. Okay, so... Well, we could put him to good use already. I'll just need to get some cotton. I'm not quite ready to do that just yet, so let's get more food for now. And once we are done improving the style, then we can maybe start gathering some cotton and turn it into cloth. To generate some income, because we'll need income. For obvious reasons. Here, we built a farm. So now we can rejoin the colony again. And start generating some profit. Here, rejoin the colony. And now... We can gather cotton with one of them. Where is he? Right here. So gather cotton, that's six cotton. And we will make cloth out of it. If I assigned a regular colonist without a specialization, we would only get plus three. 
so having a master weaver doubles our output. Like I said, specializations are very significant. So that's what we'll do. It won't grow very quickly, but that's alright. Again, we can use Europe as a source of new colonists, and this will be a pretty damn good way to generate a profit early on. Yes, professions. And we got a gift for tobacco. Hey, sure, why not? Let's take some of that back to Europe. So we'll load the ship, we'll grab the cloth that we already have. We could get some ore, because right now our limit is 100. I will have to build a warehouse to be able to store more than that. We can grab that. I need gold more than I need ore at the moment. And we do have 50 tools for one pioneer. And I suppose that's it. We'll see how much gold we get out of that. And then we can use the next colonist to start a second colony, perhaps. Because we will definitely need more than one. Off we go then. And as you can see on the notifications, the prices will change. These prices that you can see down here are not static. They change over the course of the game, depending on what you do, what you trade, what you sell, what you buy. Sell all the goods. And now we got 332. We got Master Weaver and Expert Fisherman. We can get both of them, and then I could still pay to get another one. I don't think I'm going to do that just yet. However, if you sit on a lot of gold, your king will eventually ask you to just straight up give him gold. On top of taxing you. Right now, tax rate is zero. It will increase over the course of the game. It will increase slower for me, because that's one of the benefits we have as the Dutch. But he will often also ask you to just give him gold, not a tax, just straight up give him, let's say, half of your gold. So sitting on a lot of gold is not necessarily a good idea. I could grab Master Fur Trader. 110. Okay, fine, let's grab him. And then we got Master Distiller and Petty Criminal. I'll pass on that. Back to the colonies we go. All right, now we need a spot for a colony. I could always go to war with the natives if I really want to, but no, I would prefer to not do that if I don't have to. We just need to find a spot that's far away from them, which might be a little bit tricky. There are a lot of them around here. I might have to go like north and west or south. Okay, let's try to go further south and bring all of these guys. I could use all three of them for our second town, which is not a bad idea. Meanwhile, we'll just keep making cloth in this one. Okay, let's go south then. We can also just pay them for the land, but I'll need more gold in order to do that. We will definitely use that possibility later, once we get more gold, but I definitely do not have enough gold for that at the moment. I think that spot down there might be fine. And the next up, I think we'll build a warehouse, or we could build a church, but that's 50 turns. Let's get a warehouse, because we will definitely need a warehouse sooner or later. Now, this spot is not amazing, but I'm considering it. We could settle right next to the fish. It won't be an amazing town, but you don't have to settle amazing towns. Oh yeah, another fish on the other side. Okay, we are definitely going to grab this. The game is suggesting here because there's the deer, but I want the fish to actually grow this place at a reasonable pace. And there's also a crab down here. I think I'll pass on that one. Yeah, because I would have to settle right here and we would only have one other land tile to work. I don't want my town to be 90% water tiles. This way we will get two other land tiles that we can actually work. And we have expert fishermen here. So there it is. We will start from a dock, join the colony with all these guys, and fishermen will work on the fish, and look at this, that's how many? That's 10 fish, or rather 10 food from expert fishermen. That is pretty crazy. And then we have the master fur trader. We could take advantage of that right away, like this. 
Yep. We could also assign him to something else for now, because we are only getting plus four fur, but we can make six codes with the master fur trader. We could assign him to Liberty Bells. So, Liberty Bells allow you to get people for your Colonial Congress. You'll see. They can provide some really good bonuses. We'll generate a few to get our first person. Okay, we can't go any further than this, that's fine. We'll go north in that case. I don't want to go too far because we only have one ship, and as much as I would like to explore and find other spots for good settlements, we need to move our goods and go to Europe. This will be our next one, I think. Yeah, we can use the next person from Europe to start a settlement right here. That's a really damn good spot. It will grow pretty quickly. We got 10 silver. I think that's silver. Okay. All right, let's go pick up some goods from New Amsterdam. We got 84 cloth. Okay, that is going to be quite a lot of money. Founding fathers. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. So, minus 50% travel time to Europe. Now, we don't have to accept him. We can wait for another founding father with a different bonus. And there are quite a lot of different bonuses here. This is exploration. We got religion. Trade. Military. Politics. And that's that. So, some of these bonuses are really nice. Plus 25% tobacco in all settlements. Minus 50% tolls required for buildings. I might actually pass on this guy, because travel time to Europe is not really a big deal. Let's say no for now. Open borders. Yeah, okay. Fine. Let's go pick up that cloth, because our warehouse is actually almost full right now. So we'll pick it up. Yep, it's already full, as you can see. We might as well move that guy to get more Liberty Bells. Here's another one. Two times as likely to get treasure from ancient ruins. That's not a bad one, especially if we are going to explore. I would still prefer something different, but I don't want to pass too many times. Uh, let's say no one more time. I'm hoping for something a little bit better than that. A bit less luck based. So, we'll grab all the cloth. And I think that's that. We got 54 ore. Oh yeah, we could also grab the silver that we got from the natives. Alright then, so now we'll go to Europe and bring some new people. And we can move the other fella back to the weaver's house. There you go. Sounds good. So, you can also just click sail to Europe and the ship will do it on his own. You don't need to actually manually move into the yellow area every time. Okay, reveals all tiles with burial grounds. Reveals all tiles with ancient ruins. I might actually go for that one. Okay, fine. Here, we got all the tiles, so I could actually send a soldier in this general direction. This guy. Yeah, let's maybe do that, why not? We can do it. This guy will gather the cotton for now and then we'll move him back to cloth. You know, to actually make use of that bonus. And yep, here's the king, he wants 190 gold. Which is quite a lot, we got 222 at the moment. We can say no, which will anger him, probably leading him to increase our tax faster, so we'll pay him. We should be arriving in Europe right about now, and we got, yep, now we got over 1000. Petty criminal, let's get the seasoned scout, and we can use him to actually go grab all these ruins, or some of them at least. Okay, back we go then. That was actually quite convenient. There are quite a few to the north. We could go grab all of those with that scout. Let's see what we'll get out of this one. Yep, we got treasure. So the way this works is that you can use your own galleon to transport it back to Europe. 
However, we do not have our own galleon yet, which means we can move it manually to the closest coastal town and then pay the king to transport it back to Europe. He will take like 50% commission or something like that. So it will not be cheap, but you can do it. We will not be getting a galleon anytime soon. So the first treasures you find, you pretty much always have to pay that commission. Or you can just wait. I could just keep it in my town and wait. That is definitely a possibility. And yes, I saw that notification. Let's see. Right, we got the... What was that all about? I think that was a different town, actually. Our growth is pretty good. We could also speed up that dock a bit. But I want to get some codes. Let's maybe work on that. We can do third turns of that and then switch back to Liberty Bells. This will be our next town. There you go. That's free fish. And we'll go grab the ruins, or rather burial grounds right here. Hopefully that won't piss off the natives. I mean, it might. And yep, yeah, that's going to be the town. So now we can pay 558 gold to buy the land. I'm going to do it. That's not actually that much money. I mean, we got 1000 for the cloth, so this is a pretty good deal, I would say. Assign that guy to the fish. We will want to bring more people here, however, otherwise it will take a very long time for the town to grow. So, that's the soldier. Right, let's send him back. Because he has work to do. So, on the next turn we'll get the option to pay commission to have the king transport the treasure in his own galleon. And we'll check out the burial grounds. We got some gold. 132 gold, okay. We are out of thirds, so that's fine. I'm aware of that. Here. So he will take 50%. That's fine. Again, I could just wait for a galleon, but nah. We won't be getting a galleon anytime soon, I'm afraid. Move this guy back to Liberty Bells. We could also just assign him to get some lumber. Yeah, let's get some lumber because then we can turn that into production. Works for me. In fact, let's turn that into production right away. The faster we finish the dock, the more food we'll get. So that works for me. And we'll assign one of them to the fish. Running out of storage for lumber, yep. Right, we can do one more turn of that. Actually, we don't have to. Just assign them both here. That will finish the dock on the next turn. No, it will be done on the next turn regardless. You can work on the fish then. Alright, let's keep moving. You will rejoin the colony. There's no need to guard it at the moment. And what is he doing? Let's see. So now that we have a dock, we can get free fish from a regular water tile. Let's get some hammers, maybe. Or we can work on cloth again. You know, for profit. Yep. Works for me. And we'll also want to work on tools eventually. Some of the buildings actually require tools. So, for example, dry dock actually requires 50 tools. Which means we'll want to get some of those. Yeah, let's actually start working on that right away. We have the ore because our town square is generating that. So, we'll start working on the tools. We don't have a blacksmith, but that's alright. So, there's the dock. Now we can work on the dry dock. But let's get the warehouse first. I don't think the warehouse should be a priority because I won't be able to pick things up constantly. Especially with one single ship. We'll also want more pioneers, you know, to improve more tiles. That should probably also be a priority early on. Can we pick something up here? Yeah, we can pick up the tobacco, that's fine. We can make cigars out of it, but let's just grab the tobacco for now to get some profit. We'll get 16 coats. And that's that. Is there anyone waiting in Europe? Uh, not yet, but probably soon. Looks like it might be a petty criminal. 
let's go visit our other town real quick. We'll pick up the ruin. 318 gold, that's not bad. And here's a new colonist. He will join the colony. And let's put him to good use, shall we? Let's take a look. 90 lumber. The warehouse will be done in 5 turns. I think he can keep working on that. I could also speed up the growth, but that seems like a bit of a waste. Okay, let's get the lumber. The warehouse will be done in 5 turns. Or maybe we can speed it up. We can get it done in 3 turns. So, more ruins, right here. 344 gold. Yeah, I think that guy was already worth it. You know, the founding father we got. And we got another gift from the natives. We got 1500 gold now. And we are about to get heck of a lot more. 48 cloth. And let's get some ore. Let's say 52. Something like that. Okay, and now we will go to Europe. Where else do we have some ruins? In this general direction. Right here. And we got the warehouse. So, now we could get the dry dock. That is not a bad idea. We will definitely want a dry dock somewhere, at least in one town. We could also get a church. And we could get a schoolhouse. Let's get a schoolhouse, because with a schoolhouse we will be able to get specializations for colonies without specializations. And it won't take long to actually build a schoolhouse, so this is fine. We can keep working the carpenter's shop as long as we have lumber, because we are generating more lumber than we can turn into production with one single colonist. So this will speed up the schoolhouse. And we'll want to start thinking about more settlements soon. I could start a settlement with that scout. That is certainly a possibility. Here, we got a warehouse in New Amsterdam. So let's also get a schoolhouse in New Amsterdam, at least get started on one. Okay, another tribe. And off we go to Europe. That should be a good amount of gold right there. Here's another new colonist. What did we get? Ancient map. Right, okay. So hold on, how about we send that guy to start a colony? I could start one on this side. That is not a bad idea, actually. I might do that. Next to that fish, next to the river. I don't think that will piss off the natives. It should be far away from them. All right, let's send one guy then. Which one is that going to be? Yeah, we are not growing too much anymore, but that's all right. We got one guy at the blacksmith's house. That's the soldier. Well, I need to send someone. Hold on, hold on. We don't have that many people in here. 12 cotton. Let's just send this guy for now. And we could turn him into a pioneer. That will load him with 50 tools and he will be able to improve some tiles. What we need is an actual specialized pioneer. We do not have one right now. Maybe we'll get a chance to get one from Europe. That would be nice. This guy is also a soldier. So let's just give him the guns. And we can send him west. He can start a colony on this side. Okay, sell all the goods. Now we got 2637. Do we pay? Master Distiller. He's not super useful for me right now. Expert Farmer. Let's get an Expert Farmer, sure. And I think that will do. I could also buy tools from Europe. I could buy guns from Europe. It's a possibility. So I could buy 50 tools if I want to, or 100. Let's actually do that, because we'll need tools not just for pioneers, but also for some of the buildings, like I said. And we can afford it. A dry dock needs 50 tools. 
and he wants gold again. Fine. All right, let's move. Where do we have some more ruins? To the north, from the looks of it, like all the way here. I guess we can go there. We can also just join the new settlement with that scout. This is also not a bad spot, but I would prefer to be closer to the fish. Yep, he's raising my tax. So I do not have to accept this. I can start, in this case, a new Amsterdam cloth party. Which means I will not be able to trade that good with Europe anymore. But no, 4% is fine. At least for now. So, here we are. Uh, where do we want to build the dry dock? Let's take a look. Probably here. Yeah. This settlement will potentially have much higher production in the long run. And it was also our original one. So this is fine. Do we have the warehouse here? We do, right? I'm pretty sure we do. Yep, right here. So that's 200 goods storage. And the dry dock will use 50. Yeah, right here. It says it right there. 75 production and 50 tools. So, stockade is five turns. Let's build a church. Because we do not have a single one yet. Yep, our king raised our taxes. I noticed. And this will be the colony. I could also settle next to the tobacco. But this spot is fine. Will that upset the natives? No. Now, it will take me a long time to go all the way around, which means I could build a wagon train to move goods to New Amsterdam. Despite the fact this is a coastal settlement, it will just take my ships a long time to get there. I won't be starting with that, we'll start from a warehouse. Now, do we go north or do we just join the settlement? Let's go north, because we still got some ruins we can pick up. And maybe get some gold from that. Alright, we'll unload our new colonies and the tools. How's the settlement down here doing? 24 turns to grow. Yeah, I'll need to bring at least one guy here. What I need is another ship, which is going to be our next priority, to build a second ship. That shouldn't take too long, but I don't need a dry dock first. So, unload the tools and unload these guys. That's the expert farmer, so we could use him to farm right away. Probably not here, because this is the only good tile I can get food from. Yeah, here, four food on an unimproved tile. That other city will be much better for that purpose. What can we grab? We'll grab the cloth. Yep, that's good enough. And let's go back to Europe. The farmer will go west, and this fella can stay here. Join the settlement. Let's see what he's going to do. Well, he could get some lumber. We were actually running out of lumber, so that's not a bad idea. Yeah, and we don't want to wait 44 turns for the schoolhouse. That's a little bit too long. In fact, let's speed that up and move the Master Weaver. He can make cloth later. Right now we want that schoolhouse finished. Anyway, this is getting a little bit long, so that's going to be the end of the first episode. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. I will play this all the way to the end. And there are a bunch of other old strategy games that I plan to do in the nearest future. And let me know what you think about all this. Colonization was quite a fun game. Either way, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, or a dislike if you didn't. And subscribe for more daily videos. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.